Chapter 2, I Have a Wonderful Treasure Exposition God's Word exhorts us to seek or set our affection, mind, on things above, Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2, these things are spiritual and eternal, they include God, the church, people, spiritual blessings, treasures in heaven, the incorruptible crown, and the eternal Word of God. For the moment, we want to focus our thoughts on the Bible, which we delight to refer to as the very Word of God, our goal is to inspire full trust in God's Word and appropriate it by faith. The psalmist prayed, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Psalms 119 verse 18, There are precious nuggets available, but they need to be discovered and enjoyed. The early Christians did not each possess a copy of the Bible, because the canon of Scripture was not complete at that time, they depended on public readings of select Scripture, usually read in their local assembly or in private Christian gatherings. Point 1 Tim. 413. Our goal is to convince our hearts, under the Spirit's guidance, that the Bible is the absolute authority of God, and that it is God's message and love letter to man the psalmist found it such a delight, that he meditated on it day and night, Psalms 1 verse 2, dot it is called our heritage, it is ours to claim, explore, and enjoy forever, Psalms 119 verse 111. Appreciation and appropriation of the word is a barometer of our spiritual condition and commitment. The Bible is at once the most loved, and also the most hated, book in the world through the centuries, many have tried in vain to destroy it, only to be destroyed themselves. Others have loved it so much that they staked their lives on it and became martyrs for the cause. Some words to research in relation to this book are revelation, inspiration, illumination, interpretation, application, inerrancy, and canonicity. Revelation means unveiling and contains all the truth that God has been pleased to reveal to man.i in it, God has revealed information about man's origin, fall, and sinful condition. He has revealed that God is sovereign, holy, and a God of infinite love. Also, God has revealed His plan for the ages concerning His Son and mankind. This revelation from God has been progressive, that is, precept upon precept, line upon line. Isaiah 28,13. In other words, starting with Genesis, it takes us step by step through the book of Revelation, when God's special message to man was completed. God has secrets, which he has not been pleased to reveal to man. To go beyond that is human speculation and this must be avoided. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 Revelation implies absolute authority. Thus saith the Lord and the Lord spake occurs over 2,000 times in the Old Testament, the Bible is godlike because it has divine attributes ascribed to it, living, powerful, etc. Man was created with a spirit and therefore is God conscious, man's conscience appeals to revelation for answers, where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? God's Revelation to Mankind, Two Kinds General revelation is God's revelation of himself through nature and history, and is God's universal message to man. Special revelation is specific revelation through the Bible and Christ, and becomes the church's mission in the world. Inspiration means God breathed. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, God breathed into the Bible the breath of life, as he did when he gave life to Adam in Eden. Illumination, the Holy Spirit is the author and teacher of the Bible. He enlightens the minds of spiritual believers in spiritual truths. The unbeliever does not possess the Spirit, so spiritual truths are foreign to him. The carnal believer hinders the illuminating ministry of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 13 and 14 Interpretation is the meaning of the term hermeneutic and is the human, common sense handling of the scripture. There are basic rules to follow if we are to rightly divide the word. For example, study a text within its context. The immediate and remote context will give clues as to its meaning, not all scripture is applicable to all people. Work out your own salvation in fear and trembling is not the gospel. The rituals of Judaism are not intended for the church. The Lord's Supper was not intended for Israel. Another rule is, interpret the word literally unless symbolism is obvious. The book of Revelation clearly uses symbols. Application is the personal appropriation and application of the word. If doctrine is solely head knowledge, rather than knowledge applied to daily life, it is worthless and even dangerous, head knowledge puffs up. 
The word of God is to be applied personally, each Israelite partook of the manna for himself, no one else could gather or eat it for him. Inerrancy is the absolute accuracy of the Bible. Because the infallible Holy Spirit is the author, it is without error. All the word has thus set the Lord's stamp of approval on it. When there are seeming contradictions it is because man is fallible or is adding his own opinions, enlightenment by the Holy Spirit is essential. Canonicity is referring to the authenticity of the Word of God early church leaders compiled ancient manuscripts, which met certain qualifications, into the volume we now recognize as the inspired Word of God. In the early years there were many spurious copies in circulation, but because it was God's Word, the Holy Spirit guided the selections so that only authentic copies would be included. Today we have 66 books in the Bible, of which we can confidently say, This is the very Word of God, and thus saith the Lord. Outlines Enjoy your Bible. 1. Three visions slash three prophets slash all ate the word. 2. Eating implies food, milk slash meat slash bread slash honey slash water. 1. Eating is essential for life, survival, and growth. 2. Personal appropriation is necessary for it to become a part of us. 3. Each Israelite gathered manna for himself. More or less, Exodus 16 verses 15 to 17. 3. It had a threefold effect on the prophets, sweet slash bitter slash joy percent. 4. It was preparatory for service, eat, go, speak, prophecy. 5. Our goal, see Psalms 1 verse 2, delight, meditate day and night, not just a duty. I understand the uniqueness of the Bible. 1. It claims divine authority wink with a frown inspiration God breathed. Genesis 2 verse 7. 2. It is inerrant, its subject matter harmonizes. 1. 66 books by 40 writers over 1,500 years and no contradictions. 2. Prophetically and historically accurate, scientifically correct. 3. It is inexhaustible. 1. Spurgeon, 7-week series on John 3 verse 16. Haven't scratched the surface. 2. Difficult verses, God is wiser than we are so don't choke on bones. 4. It is indestructible. 1. Voltaire, Bible dead in 100 years. His house is Geneva Bible Society. Plus. 2. Ingersoll, Bible in the morgue in 15 years. Instead, he was. 3. Jesus, my word shall not pass away. Luke 21 verse 33. 5. It answers man's three basic reasons for existence. 1. Where did I come from? 2. Why am I here? 3. Where am I going? 6. It provides the only satisfactory remedy for sin. The Gospel. 7. It introduces heaven and earth's most wonderful person, Christ, Isaiah.9, 6. 8. It works. 1. The gospel is seed that germinates into new life. 2. The Bible is food that sustains life. 3. The Bible is a sword that convicts and defends, Hebrews 4 verse 12. 4. The Bible transforms lives, homes, and nations. 5. New Hebrides, Cannibal-slash-Christian, French Trader Pot, Supper. 2. Cultivate an appreciation for the Bible. 1. Like a bride reads a love letter, completely. 2. Like a traveler consults a road map, constantly. 3. Like a scholar studies a textbook, carefully. 4. Like a soldier obeys a battle order, conscientiously. 3. You develop an appetite for the Bible, 3 Ds. 1. Desire, supernatural, motivated by the Spirit. 2. Dependence, the Holy Spirit is author and teacher. 3. Discipline and act of the will. 1. Neglect spells defeat, gradual and in stages. 1. Spiritual anemia, shows up in prayer, witness, and in the assembly. 2. Disqualifies in the Christian race, service, and leadership. 3. Fatality puts one out of commission and becomes a spiritual dropout.
2. Junk food spoils the appetite, tastes good, but has no nourishment. 3. Enjoyment of the Bible is a barometer of our spirituality. 4. As good stewards, we are to share, not hide the treasure. Footnotes Percent 3 prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and John, had visions from the Lord. In their visions, they had an experience of eating the word the word becomes sweet to the surrendered believer, bitter to the compromising believer, and joy to the victorious believer. Plus Voltaire, a professing atheist, committed his life to destroy all Bibles. He predicted the Bible would be obsolete in 100 years. Voltaire died, and his house was taken over by the Geneva Bible Society, which printed the Bible for millions to read. Hashtag John G. Payton, a Scottish missionary, was called by God in the 1800s to go to the New Hebrides Islands to share the gospel of Christ with a cannibalistic people. The island was transformed into a genuinely delightful Christian community. Point one day, a national Christian was sitting on the steps of his grass hut reading his Bible. An ungodly French trader passed by and scoffed at him for reading that book, saying, That book never did anyone any good. The Christian responded, Do you see that pot where I am cooking my supper? If it wasn't for this book, you would be in that pot boiling for my meal tonight. The Bible works, it transforms lives, families, and nations. The Believer and the Bible 1. There are more Bibles in print today than any other book. It is too bad so many of them are collecting dust on the bookshelves. 2. It is the inspired God-breathed Word of God. It has divine life, as when God breathed into man the breath of life, Genesis 2 verse 7. Correct attitudes and approaches in studying the Bible. I study it prayerfully. 1. Keep in close communion with the author and instructor. 2. One must be near to hear his still, small voice. 1 Kings 19 verse 12. 1. God would rather whisper grace than shout warnings. 2. Study it reverentially. 1. God's word deserves our utmost respect. An awesome God and Word. 1. No place for puns on the Word by comedian preachers. Sacrilege. 2. Comedians belong in Hollywood, not in the pulpit. 3. A sense of humor and laughter in its places proper. 3. Study it diligently. 1. Study in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 suggests a diligent pursuit. 1. Study is hard work. 2. It is an exercise of a spirit-surrendered will. 3. It seeks to earn God's approval. 4. It is the key to knowing God's will. 4. Study it totally. 1. Read it from cover to cover for a bird's-eye overview. 1. Observe the progression in Revelation to man. 2. Learn the chronological order of events. 3. Notice that not all scripture applies to all people. A. Examples Old Testament offered animal sacrifices. B. New Testament believers observed the Lord's Supper. 2. Study it diligently, verse by verse and word for word. V. A. Study it devotionally. 1. Study prepares the intellect for growth and service. 2. Meditation motivates the will to service and inspires the heart for worship. 6. Study it doctrinally. One doctrine is the fiber that reinforces the fundamentals of the faith. 2. Christian growth and stability depend on it. 3. It is what you guard when you contend for the faith. Jude 1 verse 3. 4. It was included in the battle cry of the Reformation. 5. It's not doctrine that divides, it's perversion of doctrine. The unlearned and unstable rest the scripture. 2 Peter 3 verse 16. V. Study it practically. 1. Look for instruction for daily living, family affairs, business, government, etc. 2. Theology in the head is useless, until it influences every member of the body. 6. Study it obediently. 1. Obedience is the key to receiving more light from the Bible. 2. To obey is better than sacrifice, 1 Samuel 15 verse 22. 7. Study it expectantly.
1. God's promises are based on his integrity. 2. Faith can trust a faithful God. 8. Study it prophetically. 1. The prospect of the Lord's coming is spiritually invigorating. 2. It becomes the blessed hope to cheer us on the long and rugged road. 1. Reliable Christian books are good but must never replace the Bible. 2. The Bible is sufficient, not a substitute to human tradition or opinions. 3. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3 verse 17. Seed Thoughts and Sermon Starters The Word is Able To Save Your Soul, James 121 To Make You Wise Unto Salvation, 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 To Build You Up, Acts 2032 The Power of God's Word 1. It Purifies the Soul 1 Peter 1 verse 22 2. It feeds the new life. 1 Peter 2 verse 2. 3. It sanctifies the walk. John 17 verse 17. 4. It lightens the path. Psalms 119 verse 105. Note, God's word in our hands and heads must reach our hearts slash change our lives. Power in the word. 1. Power is seen in creation and Old and New Testament miracles, etc. 2. A greater power is seen in God's deliverance of the redeemed. More power in the Word. Ike Conviction, Searching Power of the Word slash Spirit, Hebrews 4 verse 12. 2. Salvation, Saving Power of the Gospel, Revelation 1 verse 16. 2. Security, Keeping Power of God, 1 Peter 1 verse 5. 4. Energizing, Infilling Power of the Spirit for Witness and Service. Via Resurrection, Victory Power Over Death and the Grave Still More Power in the Word I Regeneration Livens Up, John 6 verse 63 1. Based on Christ's Resurrection, 1 Peter 1 verse 21 2. Born Again Through the Word of God, 1 Peter 1 verse 23 3. The Word and the Spirit Gives Life, John 6 verse 63 2. Antiochus cleans up, John 17 verse 17, Psalms 119 verse 9. 1. The water of the word has a cleansing effect, John 17 verse 17. 2. The young man cleanses his ways by heeding the word, Psalms 119 verse 9. 3. Edification builds up, 1 Peter 2 verse 2, Colossians 3 verse 16, Ephesians 4 verse 15. 1. Newborn babes grow by the milk of the word, 1 Peter 2 verse 2. 2. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3 verse 16. 3. Speaking the truth in love slash grow up into him. Ephesians 4 verse 15. The word of God. 1. Purifies the soul, 1 Peter 1 verse 22. 2. Feeds the new life, 1 Peter 2 verse 2. 3. Sanctifies the walk, John 17 verse 17. 4. Lightens the path, Psalms 119 verse 105. God's word in our hands and heads must reach our heart and change our lives. Reliability and authority. 1 Peter 1 25 inch the word of the Lord endureth forever. In the year 1889, Charles Duell, Commissioner of Patents, declared, Everything that can be invented has been invented. Tomorrow usually proves that man was wrong today. The word of the Lord endureth forever. The Bible stands like a mountain towering far above the works of man. Its truth by none ever was refuted, and destroy it, they never can. Notes and Quotes When the word is hid in the heart, it keeps one from sin, Psalms 119 verse 11. Sin will keep you from the Bible, and the Bible will keep you from sin. There are wondrous things in the Bible to open eyes. Psalms 119 verse 18, through listening to the scriptures expounded, the Emmaus disciples experienced open eyes, open scriptures and a sanctified heartburn. Luke 24 verses 27 to 32.
Faith in the inspired book makes one wiser than sages and philosophers, because we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 God reveals truth to babes, not to the worldly wise, Luke 10 verse 21. There is an ongoing revelation of God in the lives of believers. Judgment awaits anyone who tampers with the Bible, Deuteronomy 4 verse 2, Revelation 22 verses 18 and 19, liberal translators and liberal readers, beware. A Bible Diary, Anonymous January 15th, been resting quietly for a week. The first few nights after the new year my owner read me regularly, but he has forgotten me, I guess. February 2nd, clean up. I was dusted with other things and put back in my place. February 8th, owner used me a short time after breakfast looking up a few references for Sunday school. March 7th, clean up. Dusted and in my old place again. Have been down in the lower hall since my trip to Sunday school last month. April 2nd, busy day, owner led league meeting and had to look up references. He had an awful time finding one, though it was right there in its place all the time. May 5th, in grandma's lap all afternoon. She is here on a visit. She let a teardrop fall on Colossians 2 verses 5 to 7. May 6th, in grandma's lap again this afternoon. She spent most of her time in 1 Corinthians 13 and the last four verses of the 15th chapter. May 7, 8, 9, in grandma's lap every afternoon now. It's a comfortable spot. Sometimes she reads me, and sometimes she talks to me. May 10th, grandma is gone. I'm back in my old place again. She kissed me goodbye. June 3rd, had a couple of four leaf clovers stuck in me today. July 1st, packed in a trunk with clothes, golf clubs, and fishing gear. Off on a vacation, I guess. July 7th, still in the trunk. July 10th, still in the trunk, though nearly everything else has been taken out. July 15th, home again and in my old place. Quite a journey, though I do not see why I went. August 1st, rather stuffy and hot. Have two magazines, a novel, and an old hat on top of me. Wish they would take them off. September 5th, clean up. Dusted and set right again. September 10th, used by Mary a few moments today. She was writing a letter to a friend whose brother had died and wanted an appropriate verse. She gave up, she couldn't find the verse. September 30th, clean up again today. This wasn't your Bible was it? An Anonymous Commentary This book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers, its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be saved, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell exposed. Christ is its grand subject, our good its design, and the glory of God its end. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It will reward the greatest labor, and condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. It is the book of books, God's book, the revelation of God to man. Tommy and the Bible Oh mother! I found an old, dusty thing, high up here on the shelf, just look. Why that's the Bible, Tommy, dear, be careful that's God's book. God's book, the boy exclaimed. Well, mother, then before we lose it. We'd better take it back to God, for you know we never use it. Impressive Statistics More Bibles in print than any other book. More Bibles collecting dust than any other book. The world doesn't read the Bible, but it reads the Christian. You are writing the Gospel, a chapter each day, by the things that you do, and the words that you say. Men read what you are, whether faithless or true. Say, what is the Gospel according to you? Meditations Joy. 
The joy of the Lord is your strength, Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6. The Lord and His word are the source of the believer's joy and strength. A firm grip of God's book is essential for unspeakable joy. A loose grip of the other book, the bank book, is necessary for this other world's joy God loveth a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, When our Lord rejoices, the believer rejoices with him, when the soul is genuinely converted, the pocket book will be truly inverted. Let us thank God for this gift of his book. If I should live a thousand years and search it every day, the precious word of God would still shed light upon my way. And when someday he calls me home and at his face I look, I'll want to kneel and thank him for the great gift of his book. Gleaning Where hast thou gleaned today? Ruth 2 verse 19, Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law was in a bitter heart condition. She was impressed by the bountiful provision Ruth had gleaned for the day. This may well have been the first step in Naomi's restoration of soul to fellowship with the Lord, including a great part in God's eternal program. Where hast thou gleaned today, in the scriptures? The abundant gleanings will thrill your soul, and will have a positive influence on your fellow man. The Bible slash manna from heaven. The people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Exodus 16 verse 4, the manna gathered yesterday did not satisfy the Israelites' hunger today, what was true for them in the physical is true for us in the spiritual. Our spiritual renewal is dependent on our daily feeding on the heavenly manna, the living and written word of God. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16 Questions and Answers Question hashtag 1, I love the Lord, and at times, I love to be reading and studying the word, but, right now I feel dry. I read it anyway, but I long to have it meaningful again, what do I do? Answer, the key to enjoy and understand the Bible is in the power and ministry of the Holy Spirit in a surrendered life. The Holy Spirit is both the author and teacher of the Bible, make sure there is nothing hindering the spirit of truth from working in your life, including sins that need to be confessed or poorly chosen priorities. Question number 2, I am a new Christian and I don't know where to start in my Bible reading, I do not have a systematic way to study, how do I start? Answer, for your Bible reading, a good place to start is where the Bible starts, the book of Genesis. This will give you a good foundation for your faith to rest upon. Read through the Bible to get an overview of the whole and to understand the chronological order of events. For serious study, some students use what is called the inductive method, this means, to lead on in a systematic progression. Inductive Bible study includes three parts, observation, interpretation, and application. 1. Observation simply asks, what does it say, here the mind is at work. 2. Interpretation asks what does it mean, this is the Spirit's ministry and requires our surrender to Him. 3. Application asks what does it mean to me, this moves the truth of the Bible from the head, to the heart and life, where it needs to be. The books of John, Mark and 1 Thessalonians are good books for a new Christian to start with. Then launch out into the deep watch for, commands to obey, promises. To claim, sins to avoid or. Confess, warnings to heed, examples to follow or avoid in doctrines to study about God, the Trinity and Christ, lessons to apply and share, and difficult passages to research the key verses to memorize and meditate on. Go on, in the power of the Lord, for His glory.